4.6 other vesicles and vacuoles. <laughs> Peroxisomes and the vacuoles of cells do not communicate with the, the organelles of the endomembrane system and therefore are not part of it. Peroxisomes, similar to lysosomes, are membrane-bounded vesicles that enclose enzymes. However, the enzymes in peroxisomes are synthesized by free ribosomes and transported into a peroxisome from the cytoplasm. All peroxisomes contain enzymes whose actions result in hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, a toxic molecule, is immediately broken down to water and oxygen by another peroxisomal enzyme called catalase. But when hydrogen peroxide is applied to a wound, bubbling occurs as catalase breaks it down. Peroxisomes are metabolic assistants to the other organelles. They have varied functions but are especially pre prevalent in cells that are synthesizing and breaking down lipids. In the liver, some peroxisomes produce bile salts from cholesterol and others break down fats. In a 1992 movie, Lorenzo's Oil, the peroxisomes in a boy's cell lack a membrane protein needed to import a specific enzyme and or long chain fatty acids from the cytoplasm. As a result, long chain fatty acids accumulate in his brain and he suffers neurological damage. This disorder is known as adrenoleukodystrophy. <laughs> Plant cells also have peroxisomes. In germinating seeds, they oxidize fatty acids into molecules that can be converted to sugars needed by the growing plant. In leaves, peroxisomes can carry out a reaction uses uh oh <laughs> that is opposite to photosynthesis. The reaction uses up oxygen and releases carbon dioxide. Vacuoles. Like vesicles, vacuoles are membranous sacs, but vacuoles are larger than vesicles. The vacuoles of some protists are quite specialized, including contractual vacuoles for ridding the cell of excess water and digestive vacuoles for breaking down nutrients. Vacuoles usually store substances. Few animal cells contain vacuoles, but fat cells contain a very large lipid engorged vacuole that takes up nearly two-thirds of the volume of the cell. Plant vacuoles contain not only water, sugars, and salts, but also water-soluble pigments and toxic molecules. The pigments are responsible for many of the red, blue, or purple colors on flowers and some leaves. The toxic substances help protect a land plant from herbivorous animals. Plant cell central vacuole. Typically, plant cells have a large central control vacuole that may take up to 90% of the volume of the cell. The vacuole is filled with a watery fluid called cell sap that gives added support to the cell. The central vacuole maintains hydrostatic pressure or Tuger pressure in plant cells. A plant cell can rapidly increase in size by enlarging its vacuole. Eventually, a plant cell also produces more cytoplasm. The central vacuole functions in storage of both nutrients and waste products. Metabolic waste products are pumped across the vacuole membrane and stored permanently in the central vacuole. As organelles age and become non-functional, they fuse with the vacuole where digestive enzymes break them down. This is a function carried out by lysosomes in animal cells. Four point seven, the energy related organelles. Life is possible only because a constant input of energy maintains the structure of cells. Chloroplasts and mitochondria are the two eukaryotic membranous organelles that specialize in converting energy to a form that can be used by the cell. During photosynthesis, chloroplasts use solar energy to synthesize carbohydrates, which serve as organic nutrient molecules for plants and all living things on Earth. Plants, algae, and cyanobacteria are capable of carrying on photosynthesis in this manner, but only plants and algae have chloroplasts because they are eukaryotes. Cellular respiration is the process by which carbohydrate-derived products are broken down in mitochondria to produce ATP. Cellular rep respiration can be represented by the equation carbohydrate plus oxygen equals carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Here the word energy stands for ATP molecules. When a cell needs energy, ATP supplies it. The energy of ATP is used for synthetic reactions, active transport, and all energy requiring processes in cells. Chloroplasts. Some algal cells have only one chloroplast, while some plant cells have as many as 100. 
Chloroplast can be quite large, being twice as wide and as much as five times the length of a mitochondrion. Chloroplasts have a three-membrane system. They are bounded by a double membrane, which includes an outer membrane and an inner membrane. The double membrane encloses a semi-fluid stroma, which contains enzymes and thylakoids, dislike sacs from the third chloroplast membrane. A sac of thylakoids is a granum. The lupins of the thylakoids are believed to form a large internal compartment called the thylakoid space. Chlorophyll and other pigments that capture solar energy are located in the thylakoid membrane, and the enzyme that synthesize carbohydrates are located outside the thylakoid in the fluid of the stroma. The endosymbiotic theory says that chloroplasts are derived from a photosynthetic bacterium that was engulfed by a eukaryotic cell. This certainly explains why a chloroplast is bounded by a double membrane. One membrane is divided from the vesicle that brought the prokaryote into the cell, while the inner membrane is derived from the prokaryote. The endosymbiotic theory is also supported by the finding that chloroplasts have their own prokaryotic type chromosome and ribosomes, and they produce some of their own enzymes even today. Other type of plastids. A chloroplast is a type of plastid. Plastids are plant organelles that are surrounded by a double membrane and having varied function. Chromoplasts contain pigments that result in a yellow, orange, or red color. Chromoplasts are responsible for the color of autumn leaves, fruits, carrots, and sunflowers. Leucoplasts are generally colorless plastids that synthesize and store starches and oils. A microscopic examination of a, of a potato tissue yields a number of leucoplasts. Mitochondria. Nearly all eukaryotic cells, and certainly all plant algal cells in addition to animal cells, contain mitochondria. Even though mitochondria are small, smaller than chloroplasts, they can usually be seen when using a light microscope. The number of mitochondria can vary in cells depending on their activities. Some cells, such as liver cells, may have as many as 1,000 mitochondria. We think of mitochondria as having a shape like that shown in figure 4.17, but actually they often change shape to be longer and thinner or shorter and broader. Mitochondria can form long, moving chains or they can remain fixed in one location, typically where energy is most needed. For example, they are packed between the contractile elements of cardiac cells and wrapped around the interior of a sperm's flagellum. Fat cells contain few mitochondria. They function in fat storage, which, is, which does not require energy. Mitochondria have two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. The inner membrane is highly convoluted into cristae that project into the matrix. These cristae increase the surface area of their inner membrane so much that in a liver cell they account for about one third the total membrane in the cell. The inner membrane encloses a semi-fluid matrix, which contains mitochondrial DNA and ribosomes. Again, the presence of a double membrane in mitochondrial genes is consistent with the endo endosymbiotic theory regarding the origin of mitochondria, which was illustrated in figure 4.5. Mitochondria are often called the powerhouses of the cell because they produce most of the ATP utilized by the cell. The procedure described in the science focus on page 67 allowed investigators to separate the inner membrane, the outer membrane, and the matrix from, from each other. Then they discovered that the matrix is a highly concentrated mixture of enzymes that break down carbohydrates and other nutrient molecules. These reactions supply the chemical energy that permits a chain of proteins on the inner membrane to create the conditions that allow ATP synthesis to take place. The entire process, which also involves the cytoplasm, is called cellular respiration because oxygen is used and carbon dioxide is given off, as shown on the previous page. Mitochondrial diseases. So far, more than 40 different mitochondrial diseases that affect the brain, muscles, kidneys, heart, liver, eyes, ears, or pancreas have been identified. The common factor among these genetic diseases is that the patient's mitochondria are unable to completely metabolize organic molecules to produce ATP. As a result, toxins accumulate inside the mitochondria and the body. The toxins can be free radicals, substances that readily form harmful compounds when they react with other molecules, and these compounds damage mitochondria over time. 
In the United States, between 1,000 and 4,000 children per year are born with a mitochondrial disease. In addition, it is possible that many diseases of aging are due to malfunctioning mitochondria. Question 1. What are the similarities and differences between peroxisomes and lysosomes? Both of them are membrane-bound vesicles that enclose enzymes, but peroxisomes are synthesized by free ribosomes. Question 2. Compare the plant cell central vacuole to a lysosome. They both break down cell parts, but vacuoles store molecules. Question 3. Compare and contrast chloroplasts and mitochondria. The two main parts of chloroplasts are thylakoids and stroma. The two main parts of the mitochondria are the Christi and matrix. Chloroplasts are larger than mitochondria. Mitochondria also breaks down carbs. That's it for our video. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace and blessings, brothers.